I'm Sharon Bill, welcome to my YouTube channel. Of course, COVID-19, the coronavirus, is really creating um, problems and worry and concern for us all at the moment. And it's particularly starting to hit us here in the UK now. Uh, maybe we're a bit late in the chain, I'm not sure. Um, and it's particularly starting to infringe upon us as a family. So I thought I'd just talk to you a little bit about how I'm taking steps as a musician, as a music teacher, to try and ensure safety for all of my pupils and also trying to keep business as usual as much as possible. So of course I have lots and lots of children coming into my house and I would normally clean my piano as a matter of course. That stems from years and years ago, a friend of mine told me a story and I've written the account of her story, it's a true story, uh, in my book, Letters from the Broom Cupboard. And she tells of when um, a poorly child was actually sick on her piano, actually on the piano, the child didn't turn away, and um, she had to pick out vomit from between the keys of her piano. And ever since then, no wonder she's been totally vigilant on always keeping her piano keys clean. And that really sort of, sort of stayed with me, of course that memory would, uh, of what she told me and so I, I do generally clean my piano but of course I've um, upped the scale of that and so I've written um, a message to each of my pupils and I've told them that I would ask them to wash their hands before each piano lesson. We have some Little Miss Princess um, antibacterial soap here and then I have some antibacterial surface wipes that I will wipe the piano down with before and after each lesson and then as each pupil washes their hands they'll have their own little hand towel that I will then just pop in the wash just a one use only and then I shall wash them all on a hot wash. I would say perhaps we could just dry our hands on tissues but I feel like um I'm going to be burning through these tissues quite a lot and it seems desperately wasteful especially when there's such a massive shortage in the general tissue market so we may need these for other purposes and so we'll wash our hands and dry them on one of these towels because I want us to keep business as usual as much as possible uh, of course it's my business it's a source of income and we you know we need to eat and we need to keep the bills paid but also I'm concerned because Exams are looming, studies are well underway, preparation, people have spent months and months working towards practice and this is the same at school so as yet we're still going to school as normal and uh, I want to make sure that we can get as much work done as possible. I think I'm often reminded of a, a very famous photograph of, um, I think it was London after one of the particularly bad uh, bomb raids after a blitz and there's a picture of a milkman just doing his usual delivery in the morning, stepping over piles of rubble uh, and absolute disaster and chaos around him and he's just doing his morning delivery and I just think, yeah, you know, we should try and we'll take the precautions that we need to but let's try and do as much as we can carrying on as normal until we are told to do otherwise. It's that sort of keep calm and carry on mentality. And um, that's what I want to do, of course, to keep the projection of study going really. Now my son, he's a musician, he's a giggy musician, he's lost all of his work. So he's just sort of treading water waiting. Uh, my husband, he's an artist and he works mostly doing um, art of motorbike races and subjects in the sporting arena. And so of course, if the bike races are canceled, that may have a knock on effect to him as well. And there may come a point when I can't be teaching from home and uh, pupils won't be able to come to the lessons for a bit. In that case, we're gonna to have to just tighten our belt, you know, and really do our best to sort of pull together as a family and pull together as a community and just help each other out. We've already got a family co-op going on of bathroom items. Oh yes, uh, we've got soap, got plenty of soap. You've got um, 
tissues and so on i've got paracetamol and we're doing a family swap and between us we're doing okay and that's what happens and i don't think perhaps it'll do us any harm to learn to do without and to be less wasteful so um as long as we all stay safe and stay healthy i'm very much inspired by um what my grandparents lived through during the war and I often think about the fortitude and resilience that was required back in those years. So we've got our struggles and we've got our worries, but you know, thank God we're not getting blitzed and we can sort of do things and take measures to keep ourselves well and healthy. And years and years ago, when the children were small, I um, wanted to instill in them this sense of what our ancestors, what our grandparents and their great grandparents lived through. And so we spent a week living on World War II rations and I did a scrapbook of our week. I'm not sure they'll be truly grateful for me sharing this. But we interviewed quite a few old relatives and we asked them, what is it that you did to keep yourselves occupied? You know, how did you keep your spirits up? How did you keep warm? And those sorts of things, if you were in the air raid shelters. And a great aunt of mine told us that they used to sing the hokey cokey. And so me and the children had a bit of a sing song around the piano. I'll put some photographs on screen so you can see. Um, I don't know, did we sing the hokey cokey? We, perhaps we did, but we had a bit of a sing song. We, um, we didn't have a TV at the time anyway, so there wasn't a great deal of difference there. So we sat reading comics. Um, we did do a spell on Dig for Victory. You can see a picture here. Um, you know, sort of growing our own veg and so on to keep ourselves fed. Thank goodness that now we don't have to do that because I must say our gardening efforts were terrible. Uh, I don't think we'd have fared so well there. And uh, we read a lot of books as well. Although again, that wasn't a massive difference because my husband read many, many books to the children over the course of their childhood. In fact, even into their teens, uh, he must have spent days upon end sometimes finishing a series. He took a couple of days off work once to finish a series. We were so gripped by the story. He must have read hundreds and hundreds of books to the children over the years. Uh, and so, Maybe a little bit of this mentality will do us some good as well. But I'm trying to take a, an attitude of, you know, let's embrace this and pull together. And so if I can't be working teaching my usual students, I'm trying to see that as an opportunity of, well, I'll just get behind the computer and I'll be being even more busy trying to get videos done for you and editing and really cracking on and making the best use of that time there. I'm going to concentrate on, um, in investing in my own studies as well and I'm going to take on some study and use the time wisely and if it is that we do have to sort of lock down a little bit and just sort of ride out this time I'm just thinking how much music practice can I get done there there is no excuse there and I've got hours upon hours in which to get my scales done get some theory study done there's some pieces that I've been wanting to learn to play for ages so I shall just dig them out and give those there's plenty to keep us busy and so um, I'm trying really hard to keep this as a positive let's embrace this we'll pull through it together and we, the world is such a, a small place now and I know that means a bad thing in terms of you know, carrying the virus over the miles but also communities now if we can't go out and visit so and so then we can pick up a telephone for sure we can facetime uh, there's the computer there's plenty of online learning opportunities available we've got no excuse but to make the best use of the time no matter what and so I'm really trying to take that as a positive and we're going to just make the most of this time and as a family and as a community we can pull together and make the most of it so that's my attitude of trying to keep it positive I'm taking what precautions I can and then I'm going to use the time as wisely as I can I'm just dropping in a quick edit. Since I was talking to you last time about my pupils and things slowing down, I've received an email from my choir. Sadly, our Handel's Messiah concert is cancelled or at least postponed for the foreseeable future. 
um, a walk that we were going to be completing uh, sort of Ashbourne Way, Colwich Abbey I think it was, it was apparently the place where Handel um, composed the Messiah, we were going to be going for a walk around those ruins, that won't be happening anymore and choir this week is cancelled, the rehearsal is cancelled, they've suggested that next week we might be meeting and we'll begin the Mozart Requiem ready for the next concert but all of this is on a very stop press basis and anything could change at any moment's notice so right away Tuesday night now I've suddenly got a night free I'm not going to rehearsal so I'll probably be being doing more filming for you I'll get ahead with some more videos um, I will get some more editing done although there is a chance that I might just bail out and have a long scrabble match with my hobby who knows I hope that encourages you and um, thanks for listening see you next time bye